In a world of 350 billion movie podcasts, two chumps have decided that now is the time for cult movies to engage in combat. Disagreements will be had, blood may be spilled, and voiceover artists most definitely will not be paid. This is Cult Film Face-Off. Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face-Off, episode 18. With me, as always, Chet Roivers. Bark. And I am Nick Leonard. Arf. This episode, we will be looking at two comedy buddy cop movies from 1989 that feature Maverick Pooches as their co-stars. First off, let's kick things off with K-9. A maverick detective partners up with a German shepherd in order to snare the city's most notorious criminal, K-9. This is Mike Dooley. Are you even paying attention to me? And his new partner, meet Officer Lewis. This is a highly trained, vicious police dog. But he's peculiar from time to time. What kind of animal eats chili? <laughs> he's a lover. This guy loves cops. You got ten minutes. Kill. He's a rebel. Don't you ever pull anything like that again. He's amazing. I can't believe all that came out of one animal. Look, let's get one thing straight. The woman is mine. He's a hit in high society. <laughs> but when he goes undercover... <laughs> He has his own way of making a car. Hey, how about that pup, huh? I need a real dog. Benji. Did you see how he found all those cubs? They're the two toughest cops in town. One's just a little smarter than the other. James Belushi in K-9. Wait, I mean, obviously you've seen it, right? Many times I saw it at the cinema when I was nine years old and absolutely loved it. Right, okay. So how did you find revisiting it? Now you're a man. Well, first of all, I should just say that um, the reason I think I love this so much is because K-9 was... Uh, it came out in 1989 and it was a certificate 12. In England, the you know in, in America, it's well known that Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was the first PG-13 because they didn't want to give it a rated R. Uh, in England... Tim Burton's Batman was a 12, which created a new certificate. A few months after Batman came K-9. So when I saw it in the cinema as a 12, I was only nine years old, but as I saw it as a 12, I think part of the excitement of it was it felt like a 15 movie. Like, I felt like I was seeing something innocently that I yeah. shouldn't have been seeing. It was much more of an adult film than uh, it actually was. Um, so that's part of the reason uh, why I loved it. Um, it's unbelievably shit. <laughs> I thought it was just a, an unbelievably shit film. And the alarm bell started ringing the second it started because it begins in a car park filled with cars of adults making out. Mm. And I'm like, this is the kind of thing you see in like a high school film. There is nowhere in the world where you'll find a bunch of adults and they go to a hotel. Mm. What are a bunch of adults? <laughs> it's, like a, it's, like, it's like something a child would yeah, they, they were, they were they, you know, Maybe they, you know, they, they were foreseeing the, the whole trend of dogging. <laughs> okay, all right. That's as good a reason as any because there's no there's no better reason than that. Um, but that was when alarm bells. I was just like, oh god, this is. I mean, this is terrible, isn't it? And uh, yeah, it, it's fucking terrible. I mean, did you? Have well, you, no, did, I, did, you see, did you see? Did you see? This I, I never saw it at the cinema. Right. Um, I saw it as a kid a few a few times. I had no recollection of it at all. I could I couldn't have picked out a scene. I couldn't have. Did you out. love it when you were a kid though? I liked it when I was a kid. Yeah. I, it didn't really. It wasn't one of those. It wasn't one of those films that I would watch religiously or, any, or anything like that. Right. You know, I I I've got, I love German. We've always had German shepherds in the family. Yeah. Um, I was really surprised at how bad it was. Yeah, it's terrible. It's fun. like there was no gags in there. The humour was really poor. Yeah, um, it's a, it is a kids' film. It's a it's a children's film. But the, but it's really uneven. And, and, you know, there, there's some quite adult stuff in there. Yeah, I suppose that's what's weird. It's, it's but that's why I liked it. I, I, as a, as a nine year old boy, I was in the target market for that film. 
there's a little bit of violence, a little bit of gunplay, talk of dr- you know, it, it has the illusion of being an adult film, but it's so fucking dumb yeah. that it was tailor made for me as a nine year old. Yeah, um, it was co-produced by Steven Seagal, so I suppose that's where you're getting the whole so adult I, element. I wish it was the same Steven Seagal, it's a different Steven. Seagal. Oh, because <laughs> I saw his name and I was like, oh, if only it was Steven Seagal. Yeah, yeah Sandy. Obviously, not- that that that's what would explain the the adult some of the adult tone. Okay, right, well, that's scrap scrap that. Then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, the, the dog is good. I mean, I'm, I'm, let's try and talk about the positives of this. I mean, as an acting dog, he, he does all right. Um, James Belushi talks to the dog like he's Jerry Lee. Yeah, yeah. Talks to Jerry Lee like Jerry Lee understands uh, every, everything that's going on. Uh, it's just that the, the, the dialogue that, that Belushi comes out with is just, it's just drivel. It's just yeah. kind of like... I, I didn't get that he's a maverick. You know, they, they, they characters refer to him as a maverick cop in there. I, I think he, he's, a, he's a really... Um, he's a shit cop. He is, he is a shockingly terrible cop. <laughs> you know, he's just a bad cop. Yeah. Um, and he's just kind of... He's just obtuse. He's obnoxious. There's no charm to him at all. No, I completely agree. And it's just... It, the, everything about... Yeah, lunatic, they, they call, yeah, he's a lunatic. He's crazy. He, he really is not... There's that one bit where he drives... He, he hires a rental car and then drives it into a building, which is like, whoop de do. He's a crazy person. But yeah. it's, it, it's so desperate. I mean, at the beginning, he almost gets killed. And he, the chief of police, his boss, is angry. And it's like, well, of all the scenarios where I've seen a chief of police get angry f- uh, for a hero about something, almost getting killed... Is that one of them? I don't think so. But it's so because it's so desperate to have all of the elements there, and there's no, there's just no wit to it. There's it, it, he it, Belushi's character is just yeah, like he said, obnoxious, loud, and irritating. He's just super bullshit, a super bullshit loner. I mean, a scene which could have got could have been funny. You know, he go he goes into that bar. Completely sticking out like a sore thumb, trying to buy the locals drinks. It just felt comp- that it was completely flat. Every time he tried to be funny, I just found myself going, drawing a deeper breath, going, Ugh. "It's this is really, really like a Z grade sitcom throughout." Basically, it's not bad tea, bad tea, bad eighties. Yeah, it's really, it's just, it's just fucking lame. Um, and Belushi doesn't help things because um, he doesn't really bring. It. I mean, he he does play fucking irritating very well. I'll give him that. But, um, yeah, this is a kid's film. It's illogical uh, and it's obnoxious and it's just stupid. Um, and I loved it as a nine-year-old. That's about as... Mm. You know, because there's superfluous, very moderate and borderline tasteful nudity in it. There's guns, car chases, and there's... You know, the, the, the James Belushi's character is like... He plays Nintendo games when he's sat in his car and you're like, well, I like that as a, as a, mm-hmm. as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so dumb. Like, when, have you ever seen a, a cop in a movie... In a, on a steakhouse in a fucking convertible, oh, yeah. a loud convertible, and then there's a there's a you know when he goes to that crime scene and there's policemen having like fucking shit house sitcom conversations about their family and I've got to go on holiday. It's like this is, and the word, the bit where I was just like, I, I've had enough of this when. To show how annoyed the dog is at James Belushi, he apparently tears out the stereo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's yeah. not. Yeah. That all I have is questions that you, but but it's just supposed to be funny yeah. that the dog is a. Pa- yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, there, there, there was a scene that didn't sit particularly well with me. I felt a bit like this is just uh, this is a bit this is really scuzzy when like he basically. Um, Jerry Lee goes into another guy's car and fucks his poodle. Oh, that's right, yeah. And he's waiting outside, and he's just kind of like, "Go on, there, boy, go on, boy." And he's just like, "You know what? I mean, I mean, maybe my sensibilities are out of whack, but I'm thinking that is that's just it's just a bit bad taste." Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, um, I agree with you. I mean, some interesting things. Uh, there's, an inter- there's a kind of interesting cameos in there. Did you did you notice um, who played uh, the the, um, the waiter? At the uh, oh, Homer uh, Simpson, yeah, Homer Simpson. Yeah, 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 and 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 the the other one was um, uh, the guy who played the the Swiss Tony esque car dealer. Yeah, William Sadler. Yeah, doing a bang up job. Yeah, in the kind of role I've never seen him no. do. He's a slimy car. Yeah. I was like, yeah. hey, he was he was really good. <laughs> really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ed O'Neill's in it as well. Um, yeah. Uh, and also Pruitt Taylor Vince was the was the guy in the bar. So I had a look uh, at what James Belushi uh, has been up to um, on the IMDb of late. Um, and he's basically spent the last few years doing loads of voiceover work for kids cartoons. Oh. He's doing Scooby Doo, Hey Arnold. I went into the trivia section of James Belushi, and 
I'm really glad I did because uh, May the 14th, 2012, he announced that he has gout. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's, why is that on the IMDb? That's not. Is that true? Wait, I, I sleep a lot better at night. <laughs> knowing that about James Lucian. <laughs> Gout. I'm oh, sorry. I, I caught me by surprise. Um, the way the way the film is structured is so unbelievably basic. There's a bit with the dog, and then there's a uh, some plot, and then there's a bit with the dog, and then there's a car chase, and then lots of slow motion. Dog, and all Lo- lots of slow motion. It's very and. I've never heard a soundtrack that uses so much cowbell. <laughs> There's cowbell being played out through the entire soundtrack. To be honest, I went online to try and find the soundtrack to see if I could put some... We were going to see if you You can't get it. I, no, I, just... I, like, you like it? I, I didn't like it. There were some bits of it that I just thought were astonishing. Like, I've never heard... 1980s more in a piece of music and I wanted to see if it existed but it basically doesn't uh, the weird thing is if you look for the who composed the soundtrack uh, on IMDB the first name that comes up is John Williams and I was like what <laughs> the composer what, Spanish, the Spanish guitar or as in we well, got two John Williams you got John Williams Spanish guitar you got John Williams the film oh yeah the guy who's composed uh, Jaws well, he did the, the soundtrack no, for he did. Then, there's, that, there's that scene where they use the Jaws music uh, That's for a case, uh, but because of the way the IMDb works, it just puts the top name at the front. So right. I don't actually know who composed the soundtrack of this, but it's uh, uh, saying that I haven't seen this film in twenty-five years, twenty-five years or so. And but uh, on the day that I watched it, when I was getting ready to put it on, I did start going. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the fucking music was still in my head. So I've got to give kudos to it for well, that. Did it get you an earworm? Well, the main, the, I mean, the fact that I remembered it after twenty five years is quite something. You have to admit. I mean, like it, it's quite a catchy piece of music. <laughs> the main theme, but yeah, uh, uh, it's so. It, it, this is an almost completely plotless film. They don't do any detective work. Why did if James Belushi hates having this dog, I just take it back. He went to the place that I need a police dog. They never did anything together. I mean, the the, the dog never really... The One thing that I thought was quite interesting is that amazingly lazy dinner scene where James Belushi yeah. goes to the villain's social event and tries to humiliate him. And uh, that scene is almost exactly the same scene is in Beverly Hills Cop. And it's also in Beverly Hills Cop 2 where the road cop yeah. goes to the bad guy and tries yeah. to draw him more attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Weirdly enough... Daniel Petrie Jr., who wrote uh, Beverly Hills Cop, wrote Turn on Hooch. But, he, but we're talking about K9. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I was I'm just saying, oh, isn't that like... interesting? Isn't that interesting that, like. So the guy, sorry, the guy that wrote that scene also wrote Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2. And he wrote definitely Turn wrote Beverly Hills Cop 1, but also wrote. And he wrote Turn on Hooch. Yeah, I, I basically yeah. thought, when I was watching K9 and I saw yeah. that scene, I was like. I wonder how many times that scene from Beverly Hills Cop has been ripped off. So I went on and looked who wrote it. I was like, oh, fuck, that's weird. Also on his CV is Turner Hoops. So it's just a weird coincidence. Yeah. Um, yeah, this film was directed by Rod Daniel, who passed away uh, in the middle of last year. Um, I wonder if he's going to be on the Oscars. It's one of those weird situations where he's he was... You know, it's not an insult to say he was a bit of a journeyman, but he did a lot of work. I wonder if he's going to make the Oscars uh, in memoriam section. Mm. <laughs> I'll be on the edge of my seat. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's um, what other films? Are you, and, and, the only, the only truly significant, well, truly significant, <laughs> pushy. But the only, the only truly significant film he did was Teen Wolf, which yeah. I, I, I watched it fairly recently. And how did that stand up? I, the original. I, I really enjoyed it. I really did enjoyed you enjoy it. it? I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's just, okay. it's just one of those films that's very simple. Um, this is. A, a, a bad film, a bad film that could have been, could have sort of been raised out of the doldrums by a more proficient and um, inventive director, but it wasn't. It's, it's. Well, one thing I was. Here's another thing I'll say about it. I really like. Did you read Roger Ebert's review? Um, I, th- I think I scanned. I scanned through it. Yeah, I think it's one of the reviews I read. I really like the fact that Ebert got very, very annoyed with the penultimate scene where Belushi thinks that the dog's dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. The, dog, it, the dog is essentially um, pretending to be dead. Yeah. And as soon as Belushi looks, he pretends yeah, to be dead. Did. Yeah, he really he rolled. Fantastic. He really rolled him. And I really like that because I dragged my dad to see this film when I was nine and... This is the last film in the history of the world that my dad would ever pay money to see. And he was silent the whole time, but when this scene was going on, he, he tapped me. He's like, you realise this is completely impossible? And I was like, yeah, Dad, I'm buying into the fantasy, I know. He's like, but you understand there's no way that a dog could be called this. And I was like, I know. that It really pissed him off that the film pulled a stunt like this. And we have spoken briefly before about 
some of the absolute solid gold dog shit that appears on IMDb trivia pages. <laughs> the last time we mentioned it uh, was on the Drillicular episode where apparently Christian, Christian Bale, Bale so desperately wanted a role in the remake of the Toolbox Murders uh, and, and was so depressed when he didn't get the part that he took the uh, booby prize of being in uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman movies, uh, which is inarguably untrue. I found something on the IMDb <laughs> <laughs> trivia page of K9. Which suggested that that scene was not in the script. The dog improvised <laughs> playing dead, and the cameras just... They went with it. Yeah, they just caught him. I mean, I, I'd like to ask that person. I mean, what was in the script? What was supposed to happen? Was the dog dead? Is the dog only brought back to life because... I mean, it, it's inarguably fucking stupid. But it, it is stu- it's stupid that they're in, a, they're in a hospital. They're not in a, in a veterinary. They, I mean, the, do- the dogs wouldn't be able to treat a dog. No, of course they, they wouldn't. They'd be the drugs for a dog. Of course they wouldn't. But then again, a vet wouldn't have been able to fucking treat a bullet wound probably anyway. Well, it's a wound on a dog. They, yeah. They'd have the right it wouldn't, but the, medication for a dog. But it was... I mean, to, I mean, you can understand. When James Blues, you went there and said, this dog's going to die, and that's completely true. If they took it to a vet, a vet would... They don't have an emergency room. There's such a thing that they treat it. They have emergency vets. Yeah, but they would never be a, a bullet. How many? How, how many of those are, are trained to deal with bullet wounds? There is at least some logic involved in that. I mean, like it, that dog would die. It got shot. It's going to die. If you take it to a vet, it, it, you know, we, we there is a there is a comparison to be made about when someone did take a bullet wound to a dog. <laughs> that may or may sure not. Dogs would be taken to the vets with bullet wounds. I'm sure they have hunting but, dogs and and you know. But, I, I mean, I, I bet not many of them survive. What I'm saying is I can understand why the screenwriters had him taken to a hospital because there's some... Well, it elevates the drama, doesn't it? There's an AME yeah. and then you've got all the... I mean, it, it, I'd like to have seen the, the scene play out in real life because the, the, everyone would just stand around and be like, well, get the fucking dog out of the hospital <laughs> and it would never have gone anywhere. Um, I, I just... No, he, he was definitely barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Who? James Belushi. <laughs> Um, we can't t- teach an old drum new tricks can we? <laughs> oh okay right let's, let's, let's wrap this up okay <laughs> um, here, here's an important question did you laugh at all in K9 uh, once even once no I don't know I did no no I definitely didn't yeah. um, it's just it's a, it's a dumb really really mediocre yeah, when, when, I, when I find myself I'm actually I, I spent a lot of the movie trying to find a really good 10 percenter trying try to find somebody who looks like somebody or, or a lookalike and it, even that wasn't great the, yeah. the closest I could get to someone a love child of somebody or a lookalike yeah, right. is um, the debonair crime lord um, is that basically he's the love child of Tony Hart and Donald Trump <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Teague his name is he's also the bad guy he's one of the bad guys in Another 48 Hours which is an yeah. equally uh, worthwhile film <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I need to go and look at his face now to just <laughs> um, yeah okay I mean I, I, yeah Kane I was yeah I, I, yeah I mean I, I, will, I will never go back to it and I would encourage uh, I would forewarn anybody who's thinking about doing that to yeah even if you have avoid form, if you, even if you have fond memories of it just keep them as memories because this is just I, I, I thought it was dog shit yeah. <laughs> on to the next yep so on to Turner and Hooch Scott Turner an obsessively neat small town detective inherits a monstrously large dog de Bordeaux which turns his life literally upside down Turner and Hooch Scott Turner had finally found the girl of his dreams oh god a woman in my house he finally had the perfect relationship. So you'll be staying another night. Oh, yes, of course! When something big happened to change it. Something called Hooch. Wait a while! No! You don't know much about dogs, do you? <laughs> this is not my dog. <laughs> now he's being swept off his feet and dragged all over town. What are you doing to this dog? I'll just tell him for All in the name of love. Oh, this dog loves you, boy. Touchstone Pictures presents Tom Hanks as a man who'll beg. Don't eat the car! Don't eat the car! Who'll bargain. You're not touching the water, the orange juice, crab apple. What am I supposed to do? Make you a margarita? Who'll pay any price. 9 to 7 51. Is that, is that pesos? This is for a dog. He'll take care of your house. You're lucky to have him. Oh, no, no, no. What have you done? 
man. A man who will do anything humanly possible to get the dog out of his bed. Oh, that's it. I'm getting my gun. And the girl back in his life. I don't have room for a dog like her. Not many people do. Oh, no! Turner and Hooch. You know, we've, we've known each other for a while now. Um, I think it's safe for me to say. But are you aware of, of your drooling problem? So, Turner and Hooch, um, I, I, once again, I'm going to assume uh, you, you have had the pleasure. <laughs> saw it at the cinema a couple of times. Uh, like K9 and saw it on video many times after that but yeah not, not seen it in 20 years plus ok and how did you find uh, revisiting it uh, well in my preteen mind when I was 9 years old when both of these films came out in my mind this was a girl's film K9 was a boy's film because K9 is far it is far too macho a film to have a sad ending uh, it wouldn't dream of having a sand ending, and uh, that suited me down to the ground. I had, to, you know, all the action and all that stuff. That was that was fine. But Tom Hanks breaking down at the end of Turner Turn and Hooch when I was nine was way too much for me to handle. So I was just like, this is a "Fucking girls' film! I don't even like this." Um, so in my mind, coming back to these films, I always thought that K Nine was the best film. Um, we, you know, we just established that neither of us laughed at K Nine uh, watching it today. I laughed during the opening credits of uh, of Turner and Hooch. Just that bit when he was checking for nose hair, uh, when he was whipping his head, looking for nose hair, that really made me laugh. What, what made me laugh in that opening sequence is that, that it's 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 a five minute sequence that features an amazing amount of of eighties mod cons. You've got like the uh, the the battery operated nose hair tweaker. Oh, you've yeah. got the battery operated nose hair tweaker. <laughs> I mean, so, I'm pretty sure that's yeah. okay. what it's got, called. You've got a coffee. You've got a coffee grinder. You've got the electric shoe buffer. Oh, that's right. Um, accompanied by uh, incessant Kenny G saxophone. Yeah, this is score. if you can't handle saxophone eighties music soundtracks. This is I've never heard so much saxophone on the soundtrack in my life. Yeah, I, I got far, I got far more enjoyment out of this film than K Nine. It's a bit. It's a miles better film. That's why. Hanks is so appealing. Hanks is a far more appealing character. He's, his tone... What I forgot about is, is how to, Tom Hanks used to be in the 80s in, in certain films. He would basically... He'd be this larger-than-life character, but he'd never do it in an immature way. Yeah, right, yeah, that's true, that's true. Which I think was very kind of appealing when, when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, he did it really well in Big, he did it really well in The Burbs. He's eccentric and really likeable. It's a, it, you know, it sets it up perfectly. You've got a guy that is borderline OCD, and you've got a dog... Which is literally the most that's, destructive dog. That's but that's why it's um, it's immediately better to Can- better than Canine because you know it, the lead character is it, it, it's one note. He's an anal retentive clean freak, but that's a legitimate source of comedy when he's dealing with the dog. Rather than you know it, James, it, some callous dick, which is who James Belushi plays. That's just a license for really really lazy screenwriting. Whereas this is a funny comic conceit yeah. of this incredible incredible clean freak going up against this slobbering mess of a yeah. dog. Yeah, I, I got a lot of enjoyment out of the steady building up of steam with Tom Hanks and then him exploding. Yeah. You know, it's just he's a ticking time bomb. But that's that's another thing that singles it out. I never ever even cracked a smile at James Belushi screaming with apparent yeah. fury at yeah. the dog. Yeah. There's one bit, and, and there's some really terrific slapstick in Tony Hooch as well. When he gets smashed into the door a couple of times and then dragged through the dog flat, yeah. and he's yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll kill you. Yeah, yeah. I properly yeah. laugh. I properly yeah. laugh. Yeah. But that's because Tom Hanks is one of the greatest movie stars of our lifetime and James Belushi well, is, is it, not that but it's also it's, it's patently obvious that the script here is far far better than that this is a straight comedy and K-9 is an action comedy and action comedies 99% of the time do both things terribly and as they do in K-9 mm. whereas this is more or less a, a straight uh, a straight comedy that has plot in it just because it kind of yeah. needs to it, uh, this is a, it sticks to its, it sticks to its strengths and, and, and the strengths are here I mean Tom Hanks is, is great in that sort of character and what I think you're getting a lot of as well is there's there's got to be a lot of improvisation from Tom Hanks. I definitely th- that that's definitely true. When he's sitting, there's two scenes. There's one in K9 and one in Turner Hooch where the lead character is basically just rabbiting a dog because yeah. they want someone yeah. to talk to. James Belushi having this sleazy recollection about a girl, yeah. who, like the look of something that's rubbish. But you can yeah you can definitely tell that Tom Hanks is just spitballing gibberish. Yeah, and yeah. It is, but, it, uh, but it's genuinely funny. Yeah, it's amusing. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's I, I don't know if. Um, Rod Daniel, the director of K-Line, would have let Belushi improvise, and maybe that's a really smart 
thing on his part because I don't know what James. I mean, I'm just sorry. I'm just imagining what it would have been like if James Belushi was improvising the dialogue in Canine. It probably would have been one hundred times worse. You, you're meant to get laughs out of how obnoxious Belushi's character is. It, there's not just laughs. He's just a real turn off as a, a character. Yeah, he's just a, a um, shit, so what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. To, the, 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 the scene with, with Tom Hanks about to go absolutely fucking mad at Hooch and then it culminates in Hooch licking his balls and then pulling a cute squishy face I mean I was fucking you know I was cracking up laughing yeah the timing as well just Tom was really good when he gets locked out yeah, yeah. I was like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen the film numerous yeah. times and I just yeah. I laughed out loud yeah. it's, so, it's such a nice little moment where you get shut out of yeah. the house <laughs> What the scene where you're introduced to Hooch, I was just there. Going, they, they, that is what I did. I did remember. And they have it. They play it in the trailer. And they, they they do. They have it in a flashback sequence when he's sleeping. It is done so well. When you get the reveal of Hooch bounding up in slow motion with the Johann Strauss with the music. Johann Strauss music, I, and I'm just like. That is fine. And he just literally locks on his neck. <laughs> but compare that's it almost exact scene to Canine, where he gets attacked by the dog. Nothing. Well, there you go, yeah. yeah but that's the way you can tell uh, a, a, a far more talented director takes something that creates something essentially out of nothing. Because that seems not funny, but when you had the 2001 yeah. music, yeah, yeah it, that's a genuinely funny bit. And the exact same scene is in Canon and it's fucking nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I love the fact that they actually came up with a reason for the dog to be involved with this cop. He is legitimately some sort of witness to the crime. I mean, I don't know what weight that would have in a courtroom, but uh, at the same time... Well, the time, thing is, is that he, he, he's integral to being able to, to shake down, to, to identify this criminal. Yeah, he actually has a role in the story, whereas yeah. in Kano, he picks him up, they do no detective work, but here the dog's actually part of the plot. And you get the sense that if Tom Hanks didn't take him, they'd probably just kill the dog. I mean, he was just he was living essentially in a junkyard. Yeah. He'd probably be killed. Yeah. There, there was... I mean, the, the the scene when Amos, I think it's, it's Amos, is the guy who is the, the previous owner of Hooch, the way that he gets killed was done in a quite adult way. Yeah, pretty nasty. You know, he gets stabbed in the... I think he's stabbed in, in the, the lung. Yeah. Yeah, so that he can't swim. I mean, that was that was done in, 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 a, in, a, in a... Definitely in, a, in an adult... I don't remember that being so adult at the time. I mean, the way that unravels is very Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I mean, mm. you know, that factory making the funny noises. Yeah, right. uh, and that's where... They, that's Scooby-Doo. But I was kind of forgiving of that because that was in keeping with the whole comedic tone of the film in, in its whole. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I thought it was a fun fact. Well, it was interesting that Henry Winkler was down to direct the film, but he left due to creative differences with Tom Hanks. With Tom Hanks? Yeah. Really? Mm. I, I, I remember reading that he'd left because of creative, creative differences, but I didn't realise it was because it was some uh, dispute he had with Tom Hanks. No, I didn't know. I, I think it could have been leading on for, with what happened in the uh, the episode where Tom Hanks was in Happy Days. Tom Hanks wasn't in Happy Days, was he? He was. Was he? He was a karate expert. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that actually legitimately could have been... It yeah. doesn't... <laughs> There's beef. Uh, of all the two people in Hollywood... The, 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 the nicest. <laughs> yeah. The two nicest. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't... I wonder yeah, if but they... behind closed doors, a pair of horrible cunts. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they buried the hatchet. Everyone on the film wanted... Did you read about how they came up with the ending? I have a problem with the ending. But how did they come up with the ending? Then well, no, about, about, about the, the fact is that, it, it, you know, canine, the dog survives. In Terminal Hoops, the dog dies. Yeah. But... They uh, within half an hour of each other in the run up to the release, they held two. Uh, There's an screens. alternate ending. Didn't One they had an alternate yeah. ending where the dog survived. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. Um, and apparently the uh, like the uh, approval scores were exactly the same. So Jeffrey Katzenberg just said to the filmmakers, "You're the filmmakers, you decide." And 100, they wanted to kill the dog. Mm. For me, I, I I didn't feel that I had enough time to grieve. <laughs> It was actually. I was watching. I was like, watching, I, was watching, I, was like well, I remember being like damn near devastated when I was a yeah. kid, and, and Tom Hanks really like. And it's just like it's over. I was like, what? Literally, that? literally, the film ends six minutes after he dies. Yes, yeah, it happens in no. Fun. And and it, and it ends on a sour note. I don't. For me, that it wasn't enough of a perk up to have the fact that he's got a, a, a puppy child. that's like no. I mean, they spent the whole film trying to bond. They finally bond. They kill him off. You're given six minutes to born. <laughs> How long do you think this should be? Well, I'd have happily had a sequel. <laughs> uh, there was a TV Which point. is just mourning. <laughs> and celebrating through flashbacks the first film. <laughs> a two-hour-long funeral yeah, scene, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's what we would have wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, the comparisons to Canine, I mean, you just run out of sort of instances where it's night and day. I mean, if you compare the conversation scene, like we said, when they're just talking to the dog, Turner Hoops is actually amusing. 
it's just obnoxious in yeah. canine. And with the, there's the little moments where they make the dog appear human. Whenever in canine they did that, such as the bit when he's pretending to play dead at the hospital, you just thought, this is irritating and it's stupid. But there's a bit in Turner and Hooch where the dog accidentally turns a stereo on. Yeah. And then he looks at a speaker and then he just fucking trashes <laughs> it. And it's because it's actually directed by a, a, a director who's actually trying to make comedy happen. He's not just filming shit and hoping that it's funny. He's actually trying to sort of bring comedy out of... Uh, uh, so it's much easier to bring comedy out of that kind of dog compared to a German Shepherd. As well, that's he's got that face. I mean, he's got, do you know what I mean? And the slobber. I mean, that did make me laugh every time that he managed to. He turned up a shoe or he did that. The slobber got everywhere. You know, this script originally sold for like a million dollars. It was the biggest, uh, it was the most amount of money Touchstone had ever paid for a script. I don't quite understand why they were that enthusiastic about it, but it does. It is a eff- really efficient piece of entertainment, I think, elevated by above par direction and. Tom Tom Hanks really does have an amazing gift for comedy. It's kind of a shame that he just he doesn't really seem to make comedies anymore at all. But he he really does. There are so many moments where I just thought that would not have been amusing if it wasn't for Tom Hanks yeah. uh, absolutely just selling it through the roof. Um, this still, despite being as old as it is, which you know it's not that old, nineteen eighty nine, but yeah. it still holds up as a really efficient piece of entertainment. It's still genuinely funny, which I was I honestly was not expecting. Yeah. I was not expecting it to be... I mean, Roger Spotters would directed this, and he's done a Bond film. He did the Schwarzenegger film, The Eighth Day, along with a load of sort of uh, subpar stuff. But he's clearly uh, somebody who's got their head screwed on and genuinely wants to try and elevate the material he's working so with. So did he do other comedies? Uh, I don't think he did. Not that I saw. I, I, I don't think he actually... I mean, but, but, but it's just... It, he clearly has an instinct for it, because... There's genuine moments, genuinely funny moments throughout this, um, and there is this real good sense of comic timing, and he knows when to just leave the camera on Tom Hanks. And the story's not terrible. I mean, especially in comparison to K-9, I was pretty much with it. It's it's hokey and it's idiotic. To a, to, to a degree. It's one of those things where you just go with it rather than K-9 where you just <coughs> want to fucking bang your fist on the table and say, why is this so stupid? Um, some really decent slapstick. It's so different how James Belushi and Tom Hanks... I mean, Tom Hanks just obviously... He, he, He's destroying his neat world. So he's just very frustrated. Whereas Belushi's got this kind of down talking, kind of just smart, but not smarminess. What's the word I'm looking for? He's just an ass. The guy's a fucking he's, arsehole. He, he's, yeah. He's not a likable character at all. The annoying thing is, he's, he's really not... bolshy. He's really ag- ag- uh, aggressive. And like his girlfriend comes home with a mate, like a friend, yeah. and he just, like, and I was like, what? Why is this okay? He's yeah. being an absolute. Come back to yeah. that guy. Yeah, I mean, K- K- I don't even want to talk about Kenny anymore. It's fucking yeah. dog shit. Turner and Hooch, I was really just like, I. That, that uh, you, that's the kind of sort of Hollywood entertainment that is way above par. It's like I, I would be totally happy. I mean, I, I liked it when I was a kid, but like I said, I just couldn't handle Tom Hanks <laughs> uh, being that sad. But yeah, this is really this still surprisingly. I, I, I thought this is actually really really quite good. I'm surprised again. It, uh, it held up so much better. I mean, I watched Canine first, and I was really kind of dreading putting on Turner and Hooch, but Turner and Hooch was by far by far and away the better film yeah no question I, absolutely no question that's which it which way are you going oh yeah no I mean that's, it's, it's Turner Hooch all day long Turner Hooch it is right. thank you very much for listening uh, you can check us out on Facebook Twitter iTunes please subscribe get your retreat on sharing is caring people um, and we will see you next time take it easy ciao Film Face Off.
Here's the muffin for Hooch. I bought a muffin for you! The muffin Hooch! <laughs> 